the rise of the beast, the man of sin, a man spiritually described by two creatures, one found in Daniel chapter 7 verse 7, the last of four, rising from a troubled sea. Daniel wrote, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, it devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. This unearthly creature, an image of Imperial Rome and its march for conquest of the known world, has ten horns which links this image to the future man to come. As Daniel watched, he saw a little horn rise, verse 8, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. The little horn is the man of sin. He's also described in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 3, having some features of Daniel 7, this beast of Revelation is more specific to the man of sin himself. We are shown something more about the beast, the man of sin in Revelation chapter 17, verses 3 and 4. John the Apostle wrote, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. It is emerging from the sea which shows us he is a Gentile, meaning a non-Jew. The sea speaks of Gentile nations, he will rule ten nations. The beast in Revelation also shows us his spirit is connected to seven fallen kings or kingdoms. He is the eighth to come to rule ten nations, and the world will look to him for leadership, and they worship the beast, which means they worship Satan as well. Revelation chapter 13 verse 3. In this chapter, one of the heads of the beast is wounded unto death, but is revived to the astonishment of a godless world. From the pages of the King James Bible in the book of Revelation, a prophecy echoes through the ages, a vision of a beast that was and is not and yet is, Revelation chapter 17, verse 8. This beast, known as the man of sin, the Antichrist, is a figure destined to rise in the near future, brought up from the bottomless pit by satanic power and given authority. Ten nations will submit to him, but three will initially resist. Yet the beast will uproot these three, bringing them to their knees, and they will subject themselves willingly to his leadership, because their names are not in the Lamb's Book of Life giving their power to him, they, in a last desperate attempt to destroy the nation of Israel and oppose the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, they gather at Armageddon to fight, for Satan knows his time is short, but the Lord will ultimately destroy the armies of this beast and cast him into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 19 verses 19 to 20. From the shadows of history, Deceiving nations and commanding the awe of the world, the man of sin will emerge. But who is this man of sin? Could he be a figure we already know, resurrected to lead a coalition of modern nations in a godless age? Let us journey through the corridors of history to uncover the most likely candidate for this sinister title. What are the seven mountains of Revelation chapter 17 verse 9? We will look at the first. John is told the woman sits on seven mountains, indicating her influence over the kingdoms. The prophecy of the woman and the beast begins in the ancient world with Rome, the city of seven hills, where the foundations of a powerful religious-political alliance were laid. The Roman Empire, after Constantine's conversion, intertwined with the burgeoning Christian church, wielding both sword and scripture to extend its influence. Here. The stage was set for the rise of a system that would wield tremendous power over kings and nations, a system that Revelation calls the Great Whore, seated upon seven mountains, Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 to 5. The Bible tells us these seven mountains are seven kings or kingdoms of which the beast is the eighth 
and belongs to the seven. Revelation chapter 17 verses 10 to 11. The whore rides the beast, but she is drunk with the blood of the saints, and the beast controls her until she is destroyed by the ten nations in the future. Revelation chapter 17 verse 16. To understand where the beast comes from, we must look at these seven mountains. Remember, the spirit of the beast rises from the pit, Revelation chapter 17 verse 8. But who is the man that Satan will energize with the spirit of one of the former kingdoms, the head that revives again, that will only be known when those who belong to the Lord Jesus are safely taken home and the spirit withdrawn from a Christ-rejecting world? For now, we see that the power of the Pope of Rome, the head of a religious system, is just the beginning. The Second Mountain After the collapse of the Imperial Roman Empire, Italy descended into multiple kingdoms. Meanwhile, the Roman Church and the power of the Pope expanded its influence. The Holy Roman Empire emerged, often called the First Reich, located in Central Europe. It was an empire that spanned centuries, marked by religious crusades, inquisitions, and brutal suppression of dissent. The Holy Roman Emperors, crowned by popes, served as enforcers of the Church's will. It maintained control over its vast and fragmented territories, often through both political and military means, including the use of military orders like the Teutonic Knights and the Knights Templar, merging spiritual authority with political might. This blend of church and state reached its peak in the 1500s. The Holy Roman Empire fell on August 6, 1806. This event occurred when Emperor Francis II abdicated the imperial throne following pressure from Napoleon Bonaparte. The Third Mountain the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, also known as the Republic of Both Nations, was created in 1569 through the Union of Lublin, which united the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania into a single federated state. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, under the leadership of King John III Sobieski, using the famed Winged Hussars Polish Cavalry, played a crucial role in saving Vienna from the Ottoman army during the Battle of Vienna in 1683. The victory at the Battle of Vienna marked the turning point in the struggle between the European Christian states and the Ottoman Empire. It halted the Ottoman advance into Europe. The Commonwealth existed until 1795, when it was partitioned by neighboring powers, Prussia, Russia, and Austria, and ceased to exist as an independent state. This empire was marked by religious tolerance and political power sharing, yet its fall was a prelude to the greater conflicts that would come. The Fourth Mountain, then the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte. The French emperor's ambition knew no bounds. He crowned himself, defied the papacy, and sought to dominate Europe. He manipulated religion to serve his empire elevating himself to near godlike status among his people. His meteoric rise and fall remind us of a ruler driven by destiny and self-exaltation, a man who mirrors the beast's thirst for power, as mentioned in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. Yet even Napoleon's empire marked by its wars and revolutionary zeal pales in comparison to the dark figures who would follow. The Fifth Mountain The Austro-Hungarian Empire under Franz Joseph offers a patchwork of ethnicities and nations held together by a fragile imperial authority. Its collapse following World War I set the stage for future conflicts and power struggles. The empire's dissolution created a vacuum that would soon be filled by even darker forces. The Sixth Mountain the unification of the Germanic states under Kaiser Wilhelm I led to the rise of the German Empire, or the Second Reich, which started the war to end all wars, World War I. 
This conflict, which saw unprecedented destruction and the fall of empires, set the stage for the conditions that would lead to the rise of the beast. One who would captivate the world with false promises of peace and restoration. The Seventh Mountain Adolf Hitler, the self-proclaimed savior of Germany, rose from the ashes of World War I to lead the Third Reich. Hitler was more than a dictator. He was a man whose influence bordered on the supernatural. He mesmerized crowds with his fiery oratory, manipulated the masses, and unleashed unparalleled horror upon the world. Under his regime, six million Jews were systematically murdered in the Holocaust, a brutality that epitomized evil and godlessness. Revelation chapter 13, verses 7 to 8. Hitler's fascination with the occult, his blasphemous use of Christian symbols, and his relentless pursuit of a twisted ideology mark him as a figure whose rise was fueled by something far darker than mere politics. He became a symbol of hatred, war, and destruction, a beast that once ruled and whose legacy continues to haunt the world. Could it be that Adolf Hitler, the epitome of the man of sin, will rise again? The scriptures speak of a beast that was wounded but miraculously healed, returning to power to captivate the world once more. Revelation chapter 13 verse 3. Imagine a world plunged into chaos, where nations cry out for a leader, and a familiar person returns resurrected by dark forces to lead a coalition of godless nations. Hitler's name still echoes with fear and fascination. If resurrected, his return would shock the world, fulfilling the prophecy of a leader who will deceive the nations, exalt himself above all that is called God, and command allegiance in an era of unprecedented spiritual deception. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 to 12. Who else but Adolf Hitler, the architect of the Holocaust, the ruler who plunged the world into global conflict, and the man whose twisted ideology still lingers in dark corners of society could be the perfect vessel for Satan's ultimate deception? He is the beast that was and is not and yet is a fitting candidate for the man of sin. If he were to rise, he would be hailed as a miracle, a leader returning from history's abyss to offer false hope in a world spiraling toward darkness. Revelation chapter 17 verse 8. He will continue what he started in 1933 and what Satan has tried to do for centuries, the total destruction of Israel to oppose the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as King. But he will fail. The prophecy is clear. The man of sin will rise. And when he does, he will deceive, he will dominate, and he will lead the world into its darkest hour. The question is not if, but when, and who among the shadows of history will step forward to claim the title of the beast. Watch and be vigilant, for the time is near. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. But remember, the beast will not come till Christ takes all his saints to be with him, and the Spirit of God is withdrawn. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6.